we're going to train a neural network known as a regressor. Now, a regressor can be used to map a space of one number of dimensions onto a space of another number of dimensions. So in this case, we'll be mapping these two control sliders onto 10 parameter sliders of a unpredictable synth patch. The first thing that we'll need to do is define two arrays to hold the values of all of our input and output sliders. So we'll define an input buffer array of size 2, and then we'll define an output buffer array of size 10. And we'll feed into these arrays We'll feed into the input buffer. And here we'll feed into the output buffer. And we'll send all of these to a tab write object. And right to our output buffer. Now that we are storing the values of all of our sliders, we need to gather some data points. So for that, we'll make two fluid data sets and we'll call one input data and we'll call the other output data. And to both of these, We'll send an add point message with a dollar one and the contents of the input buffer. Now the dollar one will be replaced by an identifier number that will be the same for both of these data sets to cross correlate the data. And here we'll send the output buffer. And we'll just add a counter. for the identifiers. And now every time we press this button, this identifier will tick up and it will create a new data point with the current contents of all of our sliders. So now we'll want to provide some data. And first we can say that both of these sliders being all the way down can be sort of a rest state. So we'll just send that. And then we can find some interesting sounds. Okay, so I'll put that maybe on when both sliders are in the middle and send that through. And then I'll find a different sound. And maybe I'll put that one when the right slider is all the way up and the left slider is all the way down. And then I'll find a different sound. And let's do that on the other way. And then maybe we'll do one for when both sliders are all the way up. So now we have five data points, and we can check that by sending a print message to both of our data sets. And that, as we can see, we have our output data and our input data. And we see the all the different values I entered. All right. 
now comes the actual training. So we'll move this to the side. And we'll want to send a fit message to our regressor with the names of our input and output data sets. And this will tell the regressor to start training with this data. And it will do one set of training. And we can see the results of this by adding a list object to the output. And when we click fit, we see this here is our error. And the lower the error is, the better the mapping it managed to get between the input and the output. There's no hard and fast rule to this, but this is already on the low side when it comes to the first instance of training. And we'll see if I train it further, it decreases further. And generally you'll see this pattern where there's diminishing returns and eventually you will tend to reach a plateau. So now that it's trained, we can move these to the side and we'll want to actually control our regressor using our input. So what we'll do is get rid of these, add a new trigger object here. And we'll add a predict point message with the names of our buffers, not our data sets. And we'll send this to the reg regressor. And we'll just route the exit messages here. And now this predict point message will ask it to get the current contents of the output buffer and unpack them. into our sliders. And now, if we start moving these, you'll see the output sliders also start moving. And if we move all the way down, you'll see that's the, that's the rest state that we set. And if I turn the volume up, we'll start to hear, as I start to move the input buffers, it moves through the different sounds that we set. So there's the sound we set for when both sliders are in the center. There's another sound that we set. But now when I move in between these states, you see it also did its best to find some kind of way to shift between them. So now we have all of these new sounds in between that we didn't come up with, but are just combinations of the sounds that we added. And if we don't like those sounds, of course we can send a clear message to our regressor and then train again. Uh, or we can send a clear message to our data sets also and put in new entirely new sounds. And that is how you train a regressor to control a high dimensional synth patch with a low dimensional input.